The Seventh Tower by Garth Nix. Book Two, Castle, Chapter Twelve. Most of the furniture disappeared in the flash, followed a moment later by a rolling cloud of smoke and hot ash. A rush of Chosen and the uniforms of the Imperial Guard stormed in, with even more spirit shadows. Tal had been knocked down by the blast and was momentarily stunned. He couldn't believe they blasted the whole corridor. For all they knew, there could have been lots of Chosen here, not just himself and Ebbett. Dazed by the shock, he staggered to his feet and was sweeping hot ashes off his cheek when he was knocked down a third time by one of the guards. The guard immediately knelt on Tal's back and twisted his arms up so he couldn't get at his sunstone or a weapon. "'Got him!' yelled the guard. "'You get down from there!' another guard shouted at Mila. He didn't sound too concerned, which puzzled Tal. Then he realized that they must have thought she was an underfolk renegade, and that Tal was the one who had damaged the spirit shadows. Underestimating Mila was not something anyone did more than once, Tal thought. But this time she needed to run, not fight. Desperately he willed her to run. His mouth seemed to be full of ash, so he couldn't shout. Mila didn't run. Tal heard a cry of surprised pain from the guard who'd ordered her down. He craned his head back to see, but all he caught was a pair of boots staggering back, many other boots charging forward, and lots of spirit shadows moving around. It's not an underfolk. Some sort of creature. Use light. Wear the sword. Stand back. There was another flash of light and another explosion of ashes, but it hadn't hit Mila. A spirit shadow screeched, followed by cursing and shouting from the guards, and the strange belling sound of steel meeting Merwin Horn. Watch out! Left! Go left! Stay clear! Stay- Ah! Hull! Jump on! That way! Randall, drag that one back! Randall let go of Tal's arms and started dragging him back by the ankles. From the shouting and running that was going on all around him, it was clear Mila was still free, but there were too many guards and spirit shadows for her to resist for long. Mila! Tal shouted again, spitting out ash. Get away! They'll kill you! As he yelled, Tal writhed about and momentarily broke free. Rano cursed and tried to grab him again, while Tal kicked and wriggled and rolled around on the ground. He got under a table, but there was nowhere to go from there. In the few seconds he was hidden from view, Tal pulled the sunstone ring off the chain and hid it in his mouth. He kept the chain in his hand, with the old burnt-out sunstone still on it. Rannell ripped the table away and sat on him again, but Tal was at an angle where he could see more of the corridor. He had a confused glimpse of Mila beating back three or four guardsmen, jumping between pieces of furniture. Then Rannell pushed his head into the floor and Tal couldn't see any more. Tal heard another exchange of blows, the sharp ring of metal and the strangely mellow note of steel striking the Merwin horn. One guard yelled, and another yelped in pain. Back! commanded a guard, and there was a rush of feet. Tal made a superhuman effort, every muscle in his back straining, and twisted around. He saw Ash swirling in circles, guards leaping back, Mila jumping from the top of a cupboard. Then a great blue electric spark shot from the hand of one of the guards, straight into Mila's chest. There was a crack like thunder, a brilliant flash, and the thud of Mila's body hitting the floor. That got it, whatever it was, said a guard, relief in his voice. There was a murmur of agreement. Tal closed his eyes in total shock. Mila was dead. They had come so far and survived so much. He couldn't believe that it was all going to end here, here in Ebbett's dusty corridor. Tal saw Mila's face, laughing as she told him they had to jump back across that dreadful chasm. Mila, who should have lived to become a shield maiden and have songs sung of her exploits. Now the Far Raiders would never even know what had become of their bravest daughter. Rough hands rolled Tal over and someone took the chain and his ruined sunstone out of his hand. Tal opened his eyes as the guard searched him for weapons. Everything had gone wrong in an instant. It was all over, not just for Mila, but for Tal, his family, everyone. The guard's spirit shadow knelt next to Tal's head, ready to grab him if he moved. The other claw held Tal's spirit shadow up by the scruff of its neck, 
once again it had taken the shape of a datu. Yol tell Gwel Rerum, asked a voice, someone outside tells field of vision. He started to turn his head, but stopped when the spirit shadow's clawed hands closed around his neck. Yes, he muttered dully. He could hardly be bothered to hide the sunstone in his cheek. Nothing mattered any more. He had failed, and Mila was dead. It's him, confirmed another voice. I saw him play Beastmaker. Why does Sushin want him? Shadowmaster Sushin remained Tal's enemy, though he didn't know why. Bleakly, Tal wondered how Sushin, who was only a bright star of the orange, had the power to send Imperial guards after Tal. And why would he bother? Where did that other one come from, Tal? asked the guard who'd questioned his identity. From the Underfolk Depths. Who made the sword for her? She was my guest, mumbled Tal mechanically. His voice seemed to come from far away, as if it weren't really him speaking. Mila. She is... She was an ice coral. From outside. Silence greeted this answer as the guards stopped what they were doing. There was a nervous sort of half-laugh and a cough before they all started moving again. Outside? What do you mean, outside? Outside the castle, said Tal, from the ice. You expect us to believe that? asked the guard. She sounded angry now. No, replied Tal bitterly. But it's true. Take them away, ordered the guard. Tao to the pit, the girl to the hall of nightmares. Let Fashnik get the truth out of her, and no one is to speak of this. Understood? There was a chorus of agreement and a sudden bustle of activity. For a few seconds, the full meaning of what the guard had said didn't sink in. The words slowly repeated over and over in his head. The girl to the hall of nightmares. He felt like a four-year-old struggling to read. Then it hit him, all at once. Mila must be alive. They wouldn't take a corpse to answer questions in the Hall of Nightmares. Tal found a tiny spark of hope light up in the darkness inside him, but it did not lift it completely. Mila might be alive, but both of them were in terrible danger. Mila, perhaps most of all. The Hall of Nightmares was a place where spirit shadows could enter your dreams and change them into nightmares. It was the place where Chosen, who transgressed the Empress's laws, were punished. For Mila, who had the Ice Carl's loathing of free shadows, it would be absolutely terrifying. Tal gasped as a spirit shadow suddenly wound itself around him, securing his arms and legs, then extending a thin tentacle across his eyes. It felt something like his own shadow guard, but not entirely, like putting on a familiar shirt that was unexpectedly damp. It was also strong enough to completely bind him, and he could see nothing through its shadow flesh blindfold. Only then did he think about what was going to happen to him. Mila was going to the Hall of Nightmares, but he was being taken to the pit. Tal had never even heard of the pit.